It's the next level. You know, you don't need the discs. You can just download. Now, what do you want to watch next? Uh, Translucent, the Invisible Cock, Queen Maeve, Pleasure Slave. Big Black Noir. Oh, Starlight pulls an H. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Different strokes, man. Please don't say that in this context. I should just get up and leave. Yeah, this isn't healthy, man. You, you can't watch porn while the sun's out. Look, if I get up at that hearing, I'm dead anyway. So what difference does it make? Okay. Drop the remote or I'll burn your fucking face off. panelers welcome back to the show i'm mark and i'm steve and this week well it's gonna be a spoiler filled uh, episode of the boys season two episode seven butcher baker candlestick maker so if you have not been watching the boys season two really it's been out for a while so i don't know why you're coming now at this point to listen to us but if you haven't watched it go back watch the actual episode come back to the podcast and then listen you know this is going to be spoiler filled so it's going to go all the way up into probably the last episode of the season two so uh you know steve and i actually binge watched the first the whole complete season two and now we're discussing it episode by episode and might talk about what's going on in the next episode or the last episode at this point so It's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, tonight we are covering The Boys Season 2, Episode 7, Butcher Baker, Candlestick Maker. I think it's – that's a cool – before I read the synopsis, I think that's a really (laughs) cool title. I really like it, and I I like when other people – when I heard other people's podcasts about this episode, everybody Mm -hmm. has, like, a different take on this poem and why this this title stands out to them like for me the first time i was ever exposed to this this kind of rhyming scheme was the john le Carre novel which is tinker taylor soldier spy mm. which is but it's it's after the poem tinker taylor soldier um i don't remember what the last one has on the actual uh but uh, it's a great john le Carre, uh novel but uh, th- we're not talking about john le Carre or uh uh Tinker Taylor soldiers, but it's a good take on the words. And yeah, the exactly, scheme. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so this episode, our synopsis is to help Victoria Newman make a case against Vaught, Mallory, and the boys look to an unlikely source for answers. Huey gets terrifying news about Starlight. Meanwhile, Homelander and Stormfront further their master plan for Compound V. Uh, I just get that master plan. That that's a play on because she's a Nazi. The whole master race <laughs> thing, and we wouldn't have known it. That's 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 good. IMDb. Yeah, that's a good. Whoever wrote the these synopses was pretty on point. Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they stayed so, on target. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, what were your general thoughts of overall for the episode? You know, this is this episode is really setting us up for the final, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Oh yeah. I'm excited to to talk about. We learn so many things that we didn't know. We, we learn some, some new things about the boys. We learn some past things. We see, um, a lot I about told, Mallory too. We we learn a lot about Mallory. Um, we see, and, and I didn't. I don't think I had this in my notes, so I'll, I'll mention it here. Go we ahead. see the beginning of the romance between Frenchie and Kimiko yes. actually start to bloom here. Yes, finally. And, uh, yeah, and then we're gonna get more of it in the next in the next episode. But it's I had totally forgotten about that until I watched it uh, today. Because they're so they're out of the episode for so long, you know. Mallory sends them to watch over uh, Victoria Newman because mm-hmm. she's scared that some soup may try to kill her. And it was so, during the protests and everything, or the gatherings that they yeah, had. and yeah. they're out because they're outside Victoria Newman's house, and you know that's that that whole like I said, it's not in my notes, so I'm going to bring it up here. That is a really cool scene where Frenchie looks across the 
the street there from where he's got that Gatling gun in case a suit shows up. <laughs> yeah. And he sees Victoria Newman taking care of her, I don't know if it's her mother or or, or being a caregiver. And he yes. makes that comment about, oh, that's so sweet that she's taking care of this woman. And I just thought, and then we get that very beautiful scene between him and Kimiko where she gives, she starts to teach him sign language. Sign language. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. And what on top you? of that, he gets a smile out of her too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah. He tells that cool story about his mother and the co- and why cooking is so important to him. And I yep. do have the quote. I do have his Yervin L- y- Yolam quote later uh, awesome. in my notes. But what about you? What were your general thoughts as you watched this episode? It was definitely eye opening about Homelander and Stormfront or Stormlander, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just keep calling them Stormlander because apparently that's a relationship and I ship them. Yeah. So ba- basically, <laughs> You know, you see them coming together. They go see Ryan and, you know, his son at his uh, and Ryan's mother's house. And he basically starts stirring up the pot within Ryan and the mother. And that is something that I knew was going to happen because we've been amping up to that point. And yeah. we don't see that until the final episode which uh, we talked about before we actually started podcasting because we got confused because we saw so much. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is this is like the epitus. Uh, this is the start of what's going on within Ryan and Homelander or Stormfront and their uh, collaboration of what's going on. Yeah, it's it's the classic, you know, it's it's the classic estranged or divorced couple and the the one spouse brings around their new exactly. significant other. It's that classic we get that classic scene. You of, do see a little bit of human in Homelander at certain points though within a scene. You he, he, she's crying, he's showing empathy mm-hmm. at certain points. So you get but, a little bit of that. You get a little bit of, of a snide. There's the snide comment from Stormfront when of she course. says, oh, no, he will still have a mother, mm. you know, and uh, and just Becca yeah. gives her that that stare. But, yeah, that's uh, – I'm sure we'll get into some more of that when we get into our top fives. Exactly. And we should go into our top fives right now. <laughs> Do you know, I can't remember the last time I had a good cup of chai. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll start. Um, yep. My number five is just that cold open. I think you've got the same thing as, as yeah. yours that, that, you know, we hear Stormfront, all of her hateful rhetoric on these. And we see this guy, you know, and I don't know if he's one of her meme makers because he tells his mom, I'm going to be late for school, not work. Yeah. But then we see him kind of doing these memes. So I'm not sure what was exactly going on I think on he was there. a fan. Uh, honestly. Maybe he was just a fan, yeah. But you know, I, it wasn't until this this last watch or the, the when this rewatch here for this podcast that I noticed that it's the lights from a passing car that make the the convenience store attendant's eyes light up. You can hear the car in the yes. background as it's driving past, and then his eyes get that little glare, like, shimmer. Yeah, that little shimmer kind of thing, and that's the the guy what the guy uses to as as his reason for for shooting him and it's just a, a tragic it just it's just it's so so tragic the way it, the way it happens and yes. you know then homelander is saying some of the same things at that rally he just kind of repeats what stormland stormlander what's you got me doing <laughs> it now homelander repeats what stormfront says like it, like everything she says he just repeats it and he's he, he you see him buying into her hate and it's not going to be until the next episode that he's going to realize where her hate is actually coming from. That it's not narcissism; that she actually is racist. I mean, he's just a narcissist. Yeah, he, she's, he's he's so you know. self uh, obsessed, and yeah. it's how he was brought up, and him feeling. You know, I I think it has to be uh, had to be due to the traits of him being brought up by doctors, mm-hmm. and him being and imbued with all his power and everything else, and we see that from the doctor's point of view of what he had to do. And mm-hmm. that's the conversation that he has with, with Billy when Billy confronts him during the, the this episode towards mm-hmm. the end, which is maniacal too, if you think yeah. about it. And the thing is, is that, you know, we know that Homelander is, you know, basically he's a mess mm-hmm. and Stormfront's just using him. We all know this, 
but the fact is he is he has human qualities whereas with stormfront she's more manipulative mm -hmm. and she's in that whole aryan i want to destroy this or mm -hmm. i want to be a nazi this and right. i want the world to to be obsessed with this yeah and the the thing is is also with the the guy you were talking about where he shoots the clerk now mind you we see a, a snippet of his life and how it is daily every day and this is coming from my notes i'll eliminate that later but you see that he was uh that kid or that guy you know, kisses his mother every day. He tells him, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. But you see glimpses of it in his room, too. You see Soldier Boy's poster. You see mm -hmm. a, a Funko Pop of, uh, like, one of the soups. I think it was made. Storm no, Stormfront. No, he's, Stormfront? he's got a bunch of Stormfront, yeah. Stormfront's okay. the Funko Pop, and then he's got uh, posters of her. Most of it was her, but there there was a Soldier Boy yes. one up there as well. But most of the stuff was Stormfront. Really. Okay. So he is a fan, as we could tell, and with that whole thing with the shimmering in his eyes, mm -hmm. it, it was kind of similar to almost like Starlight, if you think mm -hmm. about it, because that's how Starlight is. Her eyes shimmer and give the, mm -hmm. that yellow glow. So, you know, and he was like a, a supporter of soups, and at this point, he got to that point where he is like torn because you know he loved soups now he's afraid of soups because that's why he shot the clerk now it's kind of similar to what's going on nowadays with everything because everybody's like we we see all this media we see everything we don't know what to know we don't know what to think you know a lot of people are confused so they act out and this is one of those forms of acting out in a wrong way and it hurts somebody in in the end and then we see that whole uh, little thing with uh, Stormlander, both of them, you know, Homelander and Stormfront. And they're doing the poses and saying we need more soups and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, please don't, you know, do these things. And it, it's very interesting because it's a lot of manipulation within one episode, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. So did you did you did you read off your number five? Did you get all your stuff? Well, you know, I just you know, honestly, it's just basically an interesting commentary in in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, that reflects of what's going on now. And yeah, exactly. It, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough social. Con it is a bad. It is a. It's a bad image of what we have going on right now. And, and exactly, and it's unfortunate. Um, Oddly never... enough, though, it was it was done before all this happened. If you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's funny how some of these writers are able to kind of um kind of look towards the future and they kind of or, or maybe it's just us reading into what they're writing i don't know it's it could be yeah you know i, I, I think whole, it probably is me reading into it the whole the whole media versus facts and truth and the whole exactly know, is 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 entertainment is entertainment feeding real life or is real life feeding entertainment that's where you get that you get that back and forth from uh, yeah but i i tend to think when i watch this show though is that I take it as it is, as entertainment. Yeah. And yeah, there is some truth to it from history, obviously, with how Stormfront is and her prejudice. But I, I take it as pretty much entertainment. So, yeah. you know, don't get yeah. don't get confused, listeners. <laughs> yeah. So my number four is John Noble. I was, I was so excited to see John Noble in this episode playing Billy's father. I absolutely yeah. love John Noble. He, he played, he was the father in, in the TV show fringe that was, mm -hmm. that I loved for several seasons. He was great cool. in that. He was, he played Sherlock Holmes's father in elementary, the, the Johnny, what's the actor's name? with uh lucy lou anyway the, the lucy lou and the british johnny oh lee hooker. yes is it yes, johnny yes, he lee was hooker? hackers yeah is it is it johnny lee hooker is that no 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 like no, no. It's, it's something like that it's though. johnny lee something i know yeah, that. It is. okay <laughs> anyway anyway he played he played sherlock holmes's father in elementary for several years it was really really great and i was so excited i remember when i first the first time way back when when i watched the episode and i was sending feedback to tv podcast industries that i was so excited i i talked about john noble 
uh, in that that feedback, that scene between him and, and Carl Urban, I just I just love it. Yeah. Uh, and they talk about the reveal. We find out how Lenny died, and mm-hmm. I had to listen to that a, a couple of times to really understand what was going on, because what what uh, John Noble says is is Billy says it was his father. It was your fault that Lenny killed himself. But Mm. then John Noble comes back and turns it around and says, no, it says you couldn't hack it. So you left. And it was when you left that Lenny couldn't take it anymore. And that's, and killed himself. So basically what John, what his, his father is doing is he's doing that classic abusive, uh, you know, abusive person kind of thing. We're putting it back Passive on them. Going, aggressive. That, going, no, this is really your fault. You know, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's not it's not my fault that he's I'm, pushing that I'm... the blame onto to Billy. Exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. he's making he's and and it was really you know because he's trying to take credit for Billy being tough and he's like you you wouldn't have been able to do that and uh, so it was it's just a really powerful scene between the two of them and I know we're we're probably not going to get any more scenes uh in the next season because the the mom said you know he's leaving he's only got a few months to live so I'm assuming we won't see him again but you know you never know we might see him in season three well maybe she was lying <laughs> could be, could be. <laughs> you and know. you know it, it cancer is not an automatic thing it, it sometimes takes years you know that they tell true. somebody they tell somebody they have months and it actually takes years you know, uh, I do love the, the through the whole scene. I just kept waiting. I really thought Billy was just going to toss his father off the balcony. I mean, it would have been that would have been dark, but that's really what I thought was going to happen. So uh, that would have been my, funny. Yeah, that's my number four <laughs> is just Billy and his dad and John Noble and being so excited to see John Noble, even if it's just a short cameo. Well, yeah, mine's kind of like a weird one. My number four would be Lamplighter's obsession with the strange porn. <laughs> Uh, he pits so Huey weird. through hell by watching it all the time. The the soup porn titles were very funny in my opinion. You know, yeah. that Lamplighter didn't want to watch <laughs> next, apparently. Uh, I'll give those titles out that he dictates, which was pretty funny. Translucent, the Invisible Cock. Or Queen Maeve, Pleasure Slave. Big Black Noir. <laughs> and the last... Starlight pulls an A train, yeah, and that's I, really what gets like Huey going. He's like, "All right, all right." Yeah, that's the one. That's the one that Huey's like, "No, no, we're not watching that. Yeah, we're not, exactly. definitely not watching that." Yeah. So. And he goes, and the fact that he brings up, he goes, "Oh, you can get these online now. You don't even have to have discs." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny scene. I, and I like when, when I didn't put it in my notes, but when uh, Lamplighter says, "Hey, man, different strokes for different folks," and Huey's like, "Oh, please don't use that term in this context." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was one of my quotes that I love. Oh, I'm sorry, I took. It's that okay. From no, you. no, it's okay, dude. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, though. It is. <laughs> Uh, number so that, three, yeah, my my number three is is it's 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 a small point, but it was kind of I, I read something either in the trivia or in the 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 goofs that people are saying because Stormfront says that Ryan is the first naturally born superhero, mm, yeah, and and but the thing is what they what the trivia I was reading kind of pointed out was that how could she really know that unless she's got her fingers in? But obviously, like she had a daughter, so mm-hmm. obviously her daughter must not have had superpowers yeah the ability right? exactly right right and the thing is it's it still could be true what she's saying even if other soups have had children mm-hmm. because she didn't say anything until um until homelander says ryan has powers mm-hmm. and that's when when stormfront puts it together and realizes oh you're the first one who you're the first baby who's been born with, with superpowers like, without... from a soup though think about right, it right but she was impregnated to... by a soup right but no no i get that no that and that's the reason why he's super but what i'm saying is the the significance is he's not a baby that was injected with compound v or he's, or well, an was, adult. was annie injected with compound v yeah, when she I mean, was in utero the, yeah, I don't know if it's in utero or it's after they're born. They never really say that. Yeah, because really I was curious that. about that with Annie's mom, you know. They never they never really explain when what age the child is is injected, but I'm 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 taking the assumption because of those babies that they saw in the first season. Remember when Billy was using the one with the laser eyes? Mm-hmm. 
that I think it's after the baby is born, Vought then approaches or, you know, could be in utero. I don't know. They don't really tell us, but yeah. uh, I just thought it was interesting. And, you know, you can see, we talked about it a little bit already. You can see kind of the fear in, in Becca's eyes as, as they're talking to Ryan. And then especially when they come back and they, they, and he's all mad because they flew up and they showed him that yeah. he's living in this compound where yeah, everything is controlled. He's you know. got the Jim Carrey treatment with his yeah. life. And yeah. yeah. But the thing is, uh, and that's my number three, too, is for the fact that Stormlander and home, Homeland of uh, Stormfront and Homelander, I'm sorry, right. taking Ryan <laughs> off on his little getaway to look mm-hmm. at the actual compound. And then Stormfront says that Ryan, is, you know, is uh, naturally born a superpower child. But the fact that Ryan is yelling at his mother after Stormlander. You know, I, I keep using that name, but I'll yeah, still continue yeah. no, that's doing okay. it. They, 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 they basically tell Ryan that he's being protected in this community, which the mother or Billy's wife actually states that, you know, it's like he's, you know, she's trying to protect him. Give the Ryan the life that Homelander never got. And I think that's where we got that human element out of Homelander at that point. He started, you could see the emotion in his face a little bit for that right. one moment. Right. Because you can see that, that he, he realizes that the only difference between him and Ryan mm-hmm. is the fact that Ryan is growing up with, with a mother, mother, but he's still being yeah. sheltered. He's still being controlled just like Homelander was. And mm-hmm. you know, you Billy had that. And I think I've got it later in my notes as well. Billy has that conversation with Dr. Vogelbaum when he asks Dr. Vogelbaum, you know, what was Homelander like as a kid? And Vogelbaum basically says, well, he was just a regular kid. He liked these, you know, he liked Manifest Destiny. He liked Davy Crockett stories. He liked to crawl up in my lap and yep. be and be a little kid. And then that, that I don't think I have it in my notes, but that, that classic moment where you can see that shift in Billy when Vogelbaum says, then I went to work on him. Yeah, he had, to, he had to turn it basically and, to... Yeah, but, Vogelbaum made him made Homelander the monster that he is. Today. Now that doesn't excuse Homelander. Oh no. Okay, but it's it's it's. I think there's this moment when Billy realizes that in his own way, Homelander had an abusive father. Uh, yeah, an abusive father, or was grew up father figure. Yeah, in, in this abusive relationship, just like he did. Yeah, it was a little bit different, but uh, but yeah. So it's um, it's tragic that you you find out that Homelander could have grown up as a regular kid as a mm. you know and not been this way uh but anyway uh you know <laughs> and so now we don't know we, we know that at the end of the last episode we know that ryan is going to go off with mallory mm-hmm. and we don't know how he's going to be raised at that point is he going to be raised as mallory's kid is she gonna you know i don't know we'll we'll have to see we'll have in to see season three yeah exactly yeah. All right, your number two. My number two is I just already kind of started talking about it. That fact that Billy kind of identified with Homelander there and his abusive upbringing, mm-hmm. and uh, but we do see that cold side of Billy again when he's threatening to kill Vogelbaum's whole family, mm-hmm. and and then I did I had to look it up because I was confused when the wife gives him the the tea and he says he says a cup of char. And I, mm. I didn't know what that was, and I had to I had to Google it and look it up. And what it is in the 19th century when the British were uh, in control of India, the word for tea in Hindi is very similar to char. And so that's where some British started calling it a cup of char instead of a cup of tea. Yeah, uh, so because I, it was a it was a different uh, version of tea at that point. Yeah it, yeah, it it may have been, or or it's just it's just that was the Hindi word. It, it, I find it interesting that it depends on how he grew up, why he. It's adopted. very discriminative. Basically, it, it discriminates between English tea and Indian tea. That's literally what it is. Okay, that's not what, but the the Wikipedia entry just said it was just it was a similar. Word it was similar, yeah, but it, I'm so. telling you that that's what okay. it is. Okay. It's no, very, I'll, I'll, no, it's it's very discriminative. I actually looked into this and I I found out about it, and yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of like discriminating against something that's different. Okay. Uh, if you think about it, with uh, the, the, what the doctor hands him and what he's used to, so he, you know, Billy's used to typical English tea or American tea at that, which is mm-hmm. acceptable, whereas Indian tea. At that point, back in whatever it was, whatever age, 
the yeah the nineteenth that... century yeah yeah eighteen that... hundreds yeah eighteen hundreds so that was imported and it was not heralded as okay. highly as English tea true okay. English tea yeah interesting interesting so it's just more of of Billy kind of showing his the darker side his harsher exactly yeah okay. it's him being vicious it literally okay. yeah verbally at that point all right so what's your number two my number two that would be uh, ashley finding mave and a guy and in bed together and being shocked at the same time <laughs> leslie left her uh left mave and she just needed something at that time i guess yeah so, elena you know she saw that video of the yeah. child and she was so horrified she was said, it I'm elena to... or leslie I elena elena, elena. Is her name. okay yeah, all right elena is her name. she she saw that video and she said i'm going to my sisters so yeah yeah and then ashley is upset because it disrupts Vought's idea of the perfect lesbian yeah. couple you know yeah. <laughs> the whole thing about they're trying to promote that it, they're a typical lesbian couple that and and trying to you know appeal to the more conservative people who kind of accept that lifestyle but don't want to know all the parts of that lifestyle kind of thing yeah is, is what it is but I, it is a it is a cool scene too because you have that moment where Maeve looks at, at Ashley and just tells her just be a human you know, could you just, I've lost, basically, I've lost my girlfriend. I'm using this as a distraction. Just be kind for a moment. And Ashley does. She has a, that a moment of being kind, but then she's still got to be the PR person. So. See, yeah, and uh, and Minifee actually brings it out, too, when she yeah. uh, she acts that way, too. Yeah, it's really, it was a really good scene. Yeah. Uh, so my number one is just that whole trial, and I mm -hmm. watched that scene several times. And it's obvious that Vogelbaum had to be the, the primary target, but it, it, it's taken me a while to sort it out. Like I said, I've watched the scene several times, and we, we have this – we're making this assumption that Victoria Newman has to have some sort of line of sight or direct eye contact with the person that she's – going to pop the head and so in this scene she's definitely looking straight at that prosecutor when his head his head pops mm. and then for most of the scene we don't see where she's looking when someone's head explodes except for the moment when ashley or, or whoever it was was pulling her away and there's one of those aids and she just you see her turn her head and that's when the aids head pops hmm. so you know and i remember watching a youtube video a few several weeks ago or a couple months ago where they tried to claim that there's a moment in the scene when her eyes cloud over like they did uh in the final episode but i i didn't catch that anywhere so i i don't i i think it's still you know when in the initial watch of this we're still not meant to even suspect that Victoria Newman is the person doing this. Mm. I think anyway, that's, that's the impression I'm getting. Yeah. Well, that would lead me to my number one, which is very similar, but I'll go into my first point of my f number one, which would be Billy's threat to the doctor that created and raised Homelander. You know, Vogelbaum. It, Vogelbaum. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, killing his daughters, sons, his son's wives and kids. Billy wanted that information so bad that he went so extreme. Yeah. And it was such a sinister scene. Mm -hmm. You know, that that it was the one thing that Mallory couldn't get from the doctor or Vogelbaum at that point, but Billy was able to get. Yeah. And then that ending within the courtroom scene where everybody's heads just started popping like you going crazy as a 13-year-old popping zits. <laughs> you know, it, it's just like wow. Uh, we were like, uh, uh, it's pop, gruesome. Pop, that pop. Is it was gruesome. gruesome. Yeah. And people are slipping in the blood and they're falling in it. And it's just, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, it kind of reminded me of, uh, what was that game of Thrones episode? Oh, the died. red wedding, the red wedding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's a lot of blood, a lot yeah. of blood, but yeah, that, that whole thing. It's, it's, it, it's still, I'm still don't haven't worked it all out that it's, it's still a little confusing to me. And we'll talk about it uh, probably when we do the next episode Yeah, is, is just trying to understand Victoria Newman's in game or who she really works for that kind of thing. Yeah. It, it seems that she's utilizing her power to gain mm -hmm. strength in her political career and what she needs to do. Yeah. 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 
So I've uh, got a couple of notes. We got a bunch of notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do my first one because my first one in, is, in, is part of what we were talking about with Victoria Newman in the previously on, uh, you know, again, this is one of those things that as we're looking back on it, mm-hmm. we didn't even think about it. When we initially watched the series, but now looking back on it, we see how important it is. The fact that we get in the previously on, we see Rainer's head exploding and then it goes <laughs> right to just like it did in that episode when Rainer's head exploded, it goes right to Congressman Newman at, at the rally. <laughs> you know, I, I just thought I, as I saw it, I, I watched it every time I saw the previously on, I was like, man, we just, we just didn't see it, but you know, we weren't yeah. meant to see it. I'm not, I, I'm not kicking myself too badly about it. Cause like I said, we weren't meant to see it. So. That is true. Well, my first one would be Annie and her mom talking in the coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And it it was a truth that needed to come out. Her mom feeling sorry about what she had done to Annie. And Annie tried to explain to her, her own mother, that Vought, what Vought was actually doing all along. Mm-hmm. Then that attack from Vought and Black Noir knocking Annie out. And I think you have something about that. I too. did. I love it. it. It wasn't until this last rewatch that I noticed that it's not <laughs> just a stanchion that he hits her with. It's the please wait to be seated stanchion that he's hitting, that he's hitting her, <laughs> her with. You can, Meanwhile, if she's you already seated. It, if, you, if you pause it, you can just barely make out that the sign says wait to be seated or something like that. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, that is cool. We also see a, a, a statue of Soldier Boy at that Homelander Stormfront rally that's mm. uh, again the foreshadowing of seeing soldier boy in the next that season. is true yep and lamplighter talking about being a prodigy and lighting his first flame at age four he feels that he is going to die if he goes on that jury mm-hmm. and he feels like the cuck in the porn movie yeah then he explains to huey that huey is useless <laughs> and huey thinks he's the cuck <laughs> Yeah. But then Lamplighter states that Huey is the cuck fluffer. <laughs> yeah, fluffer. You're even worse. Yeah, you're even worse. You're not even the cuck. You're the cuck fluffer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when do you think I, – and I think I saw you have this in your notes as well, so I, I we can talk about it here. When do, when do you think Lamplighter made up his mind that he was going to – commit suicide there in front of his statue. I think it was it, while it, he was watching porn. <laughs> it had to be it, right. It had to be in that, in those moments yeah. when Huey said, let's go, because at first remember Lamplighter is saying, no, I'm not going to take you there. Mm-hmm. And then, and then all of a sudden Lamplighter changes his mind and says, okay, let's go. So yeah, it must've been in that, that he's working out in that process of going, you know what? I can get out of all of this and just, just go, suicide myself yeah, and make just a do statement. It. Yeah, make a, make statement a statement in front of the actual statues. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I got you. Yeah. I I thought that right away. And, okay. and, and I just find it funny how Huey actually uses his hand, but <laughs> to get around. Just another one of those dark. Well, where I and it, I didn't notice it again that until this came, rewatch. That, that was an, that's a movie trope. They've used that before. Come on. Have they? Of cutting somebody's hand off? Yeah, but cutting it, their hand off, their thumb. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. But it's just the way he did it because it's funny because he actually gets up and he tries to walk away. And then you see him stop at the door and go, ugh. I need the hand. <laughs> exactly. You know? And then he spends like several minutes trying to figure out how, because once, because he couldn't get it until the, the, uh, until the sprinklers turned off, you know, and yeah. then he has to break that bottle and he's exactly. sawing the hand off. And it's just, the whole scene just is, it's hilarious. It's kind of and, out of like a comical horror movie, you know? It's like the, he has to cut it with the broken <laughs> bottle and everything yeah. to get it off. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I like that Mallory offered uh, to send uh, Mother's Milk and his family to, yes. to Nicaragua. And he actually, at first, he says, I'll take you up on that after this is over. Mm-hmm. But she says, no, no, it's got to be now. You, you've got to understand that you've got to – something good's got to come out of this. And you can see that Mallory really has kind of a defeatist attitude to her. She doesn't think this is all going to work out. Mm-hmm. You know, She thinks because she doesn't know that Billy has gotten Vogelbaum uh, – to testify yeah, exactly she just thinks they have nothing and she's like look i want to get you out of this and get you safe and she's concerned like, and it, it shows what a good person that she is too yeah that yeah. She's and mother's changed. milk just doesn't take it because the fight's just too important to and her. we found out his real name is marvin well they, they've used that they've said that before i i marvin, know but in marvin my milk, opinion but... that that was the first time i actually heard it so uh, to oh, me, okay. i okay. i it was news to me so okay yeah yeah i think i've heard i think i've heard them say that before but I mean, you could be right yeah, so uh, I have one more, more uh, a couple yeah. more actually, you know, yeah. the deep in a train at at the party 
Was it his? Mm -hmm. Was it the Deep's wedding or was it somebody's birthday party? I'm thinking it was Deep's wedding party. I, I, it was either Deep's like the reception, yes. after the wedding, or it was some kind of yeah. I I think so, but it's a, it's a little. It's not totally clear what party they're at. They're just kind of having a. It's just a party they're yeah, having. Yeah, and so. then Atrian gives the Deep a, a fish in a fishbowl, and yeah. the fish knows the Deep's name. So <laughs> he knows all, my name. He knows my name. <laughs> and he's all happy about it. And Atrian gave him something and basically apologized for being a jerk to him, which was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. We're really seeing... Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying that we're starting to see a lot of these soups that were crazed or doing all these bad things coming around to some degree yeah and being a little bit more human you know we're gonna see you know we're gonna see uh deep kind of revert in the in the last episode but we're definitely there's definitely some growth out of a train here that we're starting that he's starting to realize being out of the seven but i also wonder if if in season three Mm -hmm. It's going to kind of that kind of arrogance is going to come back because now he's back in the seven. Mm. I don't remember exactly how he reacts in the last episode to being. Yeah, to being we'll, we'll have in, to go so. back to it. Obviously, yeah. we're going to cover that. But, you know, um, I don't remember I didn't it. catch it. I didn't catch it until this episode that it's it's so Lamplighter's suicide causes the sprinklers to come on, mm-hmm. causes the building to go into some kind of an emergency yep. thing. And that turns on the light. That in gives or outside of of Starlight's cell and gives yeah, any power and yeah and she's able to draw power from it and then escape escape the cell. I didn't realize that until this watch. Is oh okay yeah now yeah I that it. that was my last note is that you know it's basically Lamplighter's suicide that actually gives Annie the way to escape and then find yeah. Huey and find her mom and get out and I just love that scene with Huey and her mom and she goes weren't you at that meeting of i believe. <laughs> believe yeah the believe rally. yeah that's funny <laughs> hey mrs january where's it where's annie you know <laughs> exactly. I just, I thought that was great I, I and a couple more quick ones you know we we get we get the black noir's uh trina allergy oh is, yeah that was amazing and he lifted his mask a little bit mave actually listened. no mave mave yeah mave pulled his mask up she so mave comes up behind him mm-hmm. and this this tells us how strong mave is mm-hmm. if we didn't know before she grabs him from behind and basically holds him with one arm and then pulls his mask up with the other arm and shoves that uh that candy bar in his mouth and i remember i think it was tv podcast industries uh podcast where one of their uh, listeners sent in a feedback explaining that a tree nut allergy is much worse than just a normal peanut. I believe allergy. it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and that it's it's much more dangerous. It's much more strong. So that's why. Yeah, it's it's and, and so that's interesting. <laughs> you know, we get Eagle the Archers kind of fall from grace, and of course he gets his head popped there in the oh he does uh, in, yeah in, in, the, in courtroom. the courtroom. And that's a funny <laughs> scene when when they're watching on the TV and you see Deep kind of put his hands on his <gasps> head to see to make sure his head is still there. And, <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, it's, he's it's affiliated hilarious. with all those people, so he's like, <laughs> yeah. oh no, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And no Billy Joel again. I think we don't have Billy Joel at all for the rest of the season. I think once they closed out that thread with explaining why. I think we get one do you uh, think so in the last episode? i think I, if do. i remember properly okay, i could we'll be see. wrong but i we think might. we get one billy joel song at the very end okay cool cool we'll, we'll watch for it but uh, yeah i was just the last couple episodes we haven't had any billy joel so yeah but it i think it comes around in the end that's why okay. i was thinking and remembering it for the fact okay. that it, it was huey's thing and that's how it comes around and that's yeah. how we started and then that's how we end so yeah but we uh we have a few quotes yeah, I got a couple couple little quotes here. Yeah. Uh, go do yours first. Well, I have one from Lamplighter saying, okay, different strokes, man. You know, and then Huey's like, please don't say that <laughs> in this context. Yeah. After Lamplighter goes through the porn movies he doesn't want to watch. You already spoke about it, but I thought it was so hilarious. <laughs> One of the first ones I've got here is is when they're in Victoria Newman's house and they're talking about trying to find a way to bring down Vought. And she says, oh, come on. You're, come on. You're not the first person to call me a cunt, Mr. Butcher. I'm starting to think of it as a badge of honor. And I think he <laughs> replies – he replies something like, in my family, it's a term of endearment. Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> well, I think that's where Billy actually felt like, oh, okay, I could trust this lady. Yeah, I can work with her. Yeah. And the last one I would have would be Frenchie saying – Cooking is a way of putting a port in the storm. And when he talks to, you know, Timiko 
and she yeah. understands it and smiles the smile that really got yeah. me and he's learning a little bit of the sign language that we talked about earlier and they were scoping out the people during those protests and uh yeah i talked about it last week that actress is so good at, at with her face just yeah facial you know, that's, expressions that's, are is, make so much really and then i i talked about it earlier but that that quote is it's it's frenchy and he says irving yalon he once said you die twice once when you stop breathing and again when somebody utters your name for the last time and I, I did look it up wow. Irvin Irvin yalom uh, he was he was considered an existential psychiatrist mm -hmm. and i don't remember what years he lived but he wrote a lot about therapy and, and counseling and, and death and that kind of that kind of thing there's a lot of quotes you can look him up there's a whole lot of quotes out there from i could not find that exact quote but there were definitely very similar things to that so awesome and then just the last one is that was that an almond joy from starlight uh, yeah exactly that. <laughs> because that, wasn't that one of the the candy bars that, that he was, was one of the three yeah yeah it was the worst <laughs> the worst candy bars in in the world bit of honey almond joy and uh uh charleston chew and she's like those are my favorites he's like oh my goodness <laughs> so yeah <laughs> all right well i i think we're kind of finished no with feedback quotes, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah we had no feedback I looked and uh, no email, no feedback in Facebook, no voicemail, no nothing. So, you know, guys, if you're really interested and you want to send out some feedback, do so, please. But with that, we're just going to continue on and go into comic news, which I kind of delved in because I've kind of neglected, honestly, for the past two weeks. But <laughs> a lot of this is pretty cool stuff. So first off. Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina are slated to reprise their roles in an MCU movie. Molina as Doc Ock, again, from the Tobey Maguire series and Spider-Man and all those Spider-Man movies. And Fox as Electro in the next Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness movie. So basically, we're going to get a split. So with, uh, I think Molina is going to be in the next Spider-Man movie. And then Fox is going to be in the Multiverse of Madness at this point. Mm -hmm. And they're signed. Everything is a done deal. So that's going to be amazing because now... I'm starting to think they're really queuing Spider-Man now to be dealing with the Sinister Six. So, hmm. yeah, I'm okay. I'm really amped up for this one. Very cool. And the, the next bit of news would be Black Panther 2 is basically scheduled to start filming in July of 2021. So now they plan on having two Black Panthers in this movie to replace T'Challa. So hmm. basically they're just going to... I'm hoping that they write him off in the very beginning. They don't show anything or explain anything. But the fact that T'Challa is gone, he's not here because we don't have Bozeman anymore as as Black Panther anymore. He, he passed away because of cancer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have one female, which I think is going to be Shiri, which is T'Challa's sister in the series. And the other is supposed to be male which hmm. I have no clue as to who they would get. So we're going to yeah. get two Black Panthers. So Interesting. Yeah, Black Panther 2, you get two Black Panthers. And they were talking about somebody else who is more of a Hispanic kind of actor that's hmm. going to play a, uh, a villain, but couldn't get much on it. But I I'm hmm. really thinking that, you know, honestly, it, it should be Namor or Namor, as you would call him, in, in the comics. And... You know, we got kind of got that inkling in Endgame at that point when, what was it, the Niagara? They were talking about the, the underwater earthquakes, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. with that, you know, Denai Carrera's uh, character was saying that to Nat or Black Widow, which I'm anticipating to everybody. So uh, there are talks regarding Black Widow come December 10th in Disney, apparently. So... Keep your eyes and ears open if you're on YouTube or whatever or in the mainstream media. Just check it out, too, because we might get Black Widow going to streaming purposes. We're already getting Wonder Woman on Christmas Day on streaming. So, mm -hmm. you know, check that out. So you could actually watch it at home, you know, because they're trying to push this out. Because with everything that's going on, nobody's going to the movies. Every, everybody's pretty much renting out 
a theater for their own home purpose to get people together. And I do enjoy that point. But the thing is, is that there's only so many old movies that you could watch. And we're anticipating all these movies. And if they have to go to streaming, they have to go to streaming. You know, I it's going to be a loss. But, you know, uh, these are the days of our times. You know, the, these are this is what's happening. So hopefully we get all these movies and everything and, you know, get to enjoy them. Yep. So, yeah, the future is coming. That's, it's it's going to happen. Yeah, so. I definitely want it. I need it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's going to be it's going to be a little while. I think we're I think no, no, we're no, still... no, no. I'm, I'm going to be like Freddie Mercury. I want it now. Okay. Okay, you can, you can keep wanting it. Keep wanting it. My only podcast recommendation this week is just Strange Indeed will be wrapping up their Great British Bake Off this week. Plus, I think this is the – they'll be doing the second to the last Haunting of Bly Manor episode this week. So awesome. I got to send feedback. Be, Damn. Uh, next week will be their final episode of that. And so I definitely promote Strange Indeed on the Podcastica Network and uh, all of the stuff that they do. And, of course, who knows where they're going next yeah definitely and i can't suggest any more run for your lives with daphne and paik so they're killing it with their coverage of all disaster <laughs> big monster movies and everything else i think the last episode i listened to is thanks killing now mm -hmm. mind you that movie was bad yes it was bad <laughs> and i'm a person that will say even though i like bad movies it was bad but i had fun watching it again just for the fun of it and i think you sent feedback but you didn't watch the movie i did i didn't watch the movie i just sent thanksgiving <laughs> feedback and then this week uh, of course by the time this comes out they'll already have released the day after tomorrow is their next one yeah and that's actually a pretty good that. movie too it's all right it, I'm saying it's pretty good. I didn't say it was a great or um, a stupendous. I, it was you, good. You're entitled. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm not. I'm not telling you. You're it had wrong. Dennis Quaid in it. Come on, he's amazing. It did have Dennis Quaid. It had Celia Ward. It had a lot of good. Yeah. A lot of good actors in there. It just uh, well, if you listen, <laughs> listen to Run for Your Lives podcast. If you haven't already, by the time this comes out, it should be available for you exactly. on the Pirate Core Entertainment network yep network thank you so run for your lives podcast with daphne and Pake. yeah definitely and the last one i would have would be jason and lucy on the walking dead cast with the coverage of the walking dead world beyond well now since fear the walking dead is in its mid-season hiatus mm -hmm. we're not going to get anything for a while so all we have is world beyond so check yeah. that out check out what lucy and jason have to say and i know that J jason is not a fan of world beyond um, oh no! Actually, he's, no. He's not a fan of, around, world, yeah. of fear. Uh, actually, fear. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're they're they've kind of gone back and forth. This <laughs> exactly. Season, but I think I think they've finally settled on world beyond is better than fear. I think that's what the final analysis is going to be. Wow. Uh, now, now, don't get me wrong. Both shows are not great, but world beyond is definitely better than fear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, especially since we only got what two episodes of John Dory in this first half so that is anyway. true yeah yeah anyway. john dory is the hero <laughs> better than morgan at this point i think <laughs> this point um all right well let's let's do some housekeeping issues here sure uh, we do love to get feedback from our listeners we would love to hear what your thoughts are on the final episode of the boys season two which is entitled what i know so send that to us and there's various ways you can get that feedback to us you can send that to our you can go to our website which is panels to pixels podcast.com panels to pixels podcast all spelled out there i could do it alpha and numerically for you or under alpha, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, panels to pixels podcast.com. That'll redirect you to our Facebook page where you can leave feedback for us. And that's facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. Dot com. You can call us and leave a message. It is 845-350-2095. I got to look up the letters for those and see if there's something cool. Some <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> cool words we can make Hopefully out of Hopefully they're that. not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, again, that's 845-350-2095. You can also find us on YouTube at Panels to Pixels Podcast. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us, and let us know there what you think because you can leave comments there as well we'll check those out too we are on any podcast player of choice that's out there i don't know which one you're listening to us on i use itunes but that's because i'm an apple guy there you go uh you know you got google Mark play uses, spotify 
Yeah. And then Weezer. What is it? Weezer? Geezer? Deezer Geezer, is another. But this, uh, right now, currently, we're on Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts, there and Amazon Music as well. So Perfect. check us out there on those particular apps. But again, as I said, next week, we will be doing the final episode. And hopefully next week, we will have we will narrow down what we're going to do next. Mark and I have got some thoughts. But if you have any thoughts on what you think we should do yeah, next. Us- you know, send them, send them to us our way. That that would be amazing. I love the idea of you guys interacting. Exactly. So, Mark, where can our listeners hear you? Well, I can be found right here on Panels of the Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. So you can also hear me on my other podcast, which would be Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. So that podcast concentrates on pretty much adventure films action films you know thriller films anything that gets your adrenaline going so with that we cover different movies every week you've been on there our friends have have been on wendy has been on there ben beck who's on the next level podcast network is on there so you know there's a whole bunch of things so this week we're going to be doing the movie Alien, and I have our friend Wendy going to come on. So we're covering 1979's Alien with Sigourney Weaver. Excellent. And uh, that that's what I'm doing next. And me, I just I love watching TV probably too much, but I uh, I send voicemails to various uh, podcasts of our friends, and uh, so we'll be you can hear my voice on that uh can't wait we are we are coming to because we're getting into the holiday season so we're kind of getting shows on hiatus we got some other things starting up but uh definitely after the first of the year i think we're gonna have some more new content coming out from uh, various places so you'll hear my voice on those as well definitely and keep in mind listeners i apologize if a lot of these uh, episodes are coming out a little bit later i work in retail services so it's kind it's of hard of year for you. Yeah, it's that time of the year for me. So it's kind of hard for me to edit and do two podcasts or if not three, depending on what I'm on. So I, it's hard to edit and do everything in between. So thank you for being patient and listening when you can. So with that, thanks everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Okay, good night. Good night.